Science Beetle. Hey, welcome back students to Science Beetle and Math 101. Today we're going to be covering the greatest common factors and the least common multiples. But I'm going to go ahead and divide this into two parts. The first part is going to deal with greatest common factors. So we're dealing with the first part today. Okay, greatest common factors, essentially when you have two numbers and you're trying to figure out which numbers they have in common. So um, let me just write that down. So the greatest common factor is the greatest whole number common to both numbers. So for example, let's say we have two numbers. Let's say we have number 45 and we have number 81. And in order to figure out the factors, we have to use a factor tree. And recall from previous lessons, the way we do factor tree is we figure out what two numbers when multiplied together are going to give us the number in question. I always like to start with 1 because that gives us the first factor, which is 1. And if I multiply 1 times 45, I'll get 45. And then i got to look for several ways to get 45. Well, if I, since I know that 45 ends in a 5, I know that it's a multiple of 5. So I can take 5 times 9, and that will give me 45. Then I can reduce to 9 further, and this becomes 3 times 3. Now, had I stopped here, we probably would have said that these are all the factors. We probably would have said that the factors of 45 are 1, 3, 5, 9, and 45, right? But if we did that, we would have left out one very important number, which is 15. It's not in the factor tree. So one thing that I can show you here uh, is that, or tell you, is that when you do a factor tree, you got to make sure that you account for all numbers. Since we know in a factor tree, the, the smallest number that you're going to have in the factor sequence is going to be 1. The greatest number is going to be 45. That means that in between, you're going to have a set of numbers that are going to be all the factors. And in doing so, you got to ask yourself, is there another way that I could have gotten 45? Because that's the, that's the section that we're kind of looking at right now. Well, if we did that, we would have asked, well, actually, yeah, we, we would have said, yeah, we actually can get 45 when we multiply 15 times 3. And if you do that, then you would have gotten 45. The 15 would have been reduced, 5 times 3. And nothing would have changed in terms of the overall uh, factors because we already have a 3 over here. So the 3 here doesn't really make that much of a difference. What does make a difference is that we've now identified the 15. So now when we write the factors, we would write 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, and 45. Okay, so if we do the same for the 81. Let's go ahead and figure out the factors there. We would say that uh, 1 times 81 would give us 81, and that's true. And then we would be able to take 9 times 9. That'll give us 81. And then we can go 9 can be reduced to 3 times 3. Same thing here, 3 times 3. And again, looking at this, we would say, yeah, th these are all the factors. We would say that the factors would be 1 at the low end and 81 at the high end. And we would say that we would have a 3 as a factor, a 9 as a factor, and 81. But we know that we can get um, some of these numbers in a slightly different way. There is another way to get 81. And so let me show you what that way is. Now, this is not going to be very obvious, but... The way that I figure out if there's any other number that I can get is I look at the numbers here at the very bottom. And since I know that all of these numbers at the bottom are all prime, I can take the 3 and multiply it with the 9, and that will give me 27. If I get 27, can I multiply it by some other number to get 81? And the answer is yes, you can. And so I would take 27 here, multiply it times 3. And when you do that, let's just do the math up here, 27 times 3. So 3 times 7 is 21, carry the 2, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2, 81. So what I did here is I, I kind of cheated a little bit, but what I did was that I know that the two factors of 9 uh, are going to be 3 and 3. So one way that I can combine this is to multiply these two together to get 27. When I multiply times 3, then I know that uh, I'm going to get 81. And the reason I'm able to do that is because 9 and 3 are both factors. So if I'm able to do that, that means that I might be able to kind of get in there, multiply those together, times some other number to get the answer that I want. I know that's a little bit of a wrong way, but that's just using the factors inside to help us identify some of the missing factors in this case. 
So to finish up the uh, the sequence here, the, the factors for 81 are going to be 1, 3, 9, 27, and 81. Okay. So what we do at this point is we look for the numbers in common or the factors in common. So I know that the 1 is common to both. I know the 3 is common to both. And the 9 is common to both. And that's about it, really. And so since of the two, here's another important thing, is since the 45 is the smallest of the two, so between 85, 81 and 45, 45 is the smallest, 45 is going to be the lower limit. So no number uh, above uh, 45 on the 81 side is going to be considered because that's not going to be common to both. Okay? And so... Going back to this, since 9 is the number that's common to both, in this particular case, the greatest common factor to both 45 and 81, in this case, is going to be 9. Let's go ahead and try these two numbers, 64 and 20. Begin with the factor tree. 1 times 64 gives me 64. Then I'm going to go 2. 2 times what will give me 64? That'll be 32. And then I can get 32. One way I can get 32 is going to be if I take 4 times 8, and then I can reduce the 4s down to 2 times 2, and then the 8, 4 times 2, and then the 4 can be reduced 2 times 2. And that's the lowest I can go there. But there is another way that you can get the 32. You can also get 32 when you multiply 16 times 2. Okay? And since... Um, we have that, and just to show you, 16 times 2, 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 32, and that's how we get 32 there. Now we further reduce the 16, and 4 times 4, and then the 4 is reduced down to 2 times 2, and 2 times 2, okay? So that's going to be the complete factor tree on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and do the factor tree for 20. And I know that I can multiply 1 times 20 to get 20. And then 20, I can get 20 by multiplying 2 times 10. And then I can take the 10 and multiply that uh, 2 times 5. Now, since I know that 5 is a factor, the one thing I can ask is, can, the 20, can I get 20 using the 5 if I multiply 5 times another number? And actually, if I do that, I can. If I multiply it times 4, I'll get 20 then what I can do here is I can reduce the 4s 2 times 2, and I'm done there. Now, if we go through and identify all the primes in these, and here are the primes. So that tells us that the ends of these um, factors are primes, and we can stop there. And same thing here on the right-hand side. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and write the factors for each, and then we can identify the highest common or the greatest common factor. So if we do the 64 first, the common factors, or the factors of 64 are going to be 1, 2, 4, 16, 32, and 64. And if I do the same thing for the factors of 20, I'm going to get 1, 2, 5, well, rather, go back 1, I'm going to get 4, 5, 10, and 20. Now I go back and identify the common. So I know that these are common here, the 1s, the 2s are common, the 4s are common, and no other number is common. But the greatest one of, the, of all of them is going to be the 4. So the greatest common factor between 64 and 20 is going to be 4. All right, don't, go, don't forget that there is a part 2 to this, and in part 2 we'll go ahead and talk about the least common multiples. Go ahead and subscribe us and see us at the next lesson.